What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about something that's very important, which is using the mirror modifier to work on symmetrical 3D shapes. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so remember that in general, as 3D modelers, we're usually trying to save as much time as possible. And one of the ways we can do that is by reducing the amount of rework that we have to do. So let's say I'm gonna do a shift A and I'm gonna add a mesh, let's add a monkey. And so what I wanna do is I wanna bring that monkey in, rotate it 90 degrees like this. Now let's say that I wanted to um, work on this monkey model make some changes, right? So maybe I wanna make some adjustments to the ear, maybe move it up, something like that. Um, doesn't really matter what you're trying to do, but let's say that we wanna make that change. Well, usually on an object like this one, which is symmetrical, meaning it's the same on both sides, um, you're going to wanna make that change on both sides. Now you could come in here and try to do them both at the same time, make that adjustment. I mean, it's definitely possible, but for more complex movements and changes, that's not really gonna be what you wanna do because you're gonna be duplicating that work on both sides. And so a lot of the time what we'll do is we'll use the mirror modifier um, to take half of a symmetrical object and mirror it across a certain location. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go into straight on view, tab into edit mode, uh, hold Z and go into wireframe mode. I'm gonna delete out all of the vertices on this side of this face, right? So we're gonna take all of these, delete them out like this. Now we've got half of a monkey head, right? So we've got that monkey head in here. And what we wanna do is we wanna use the mirror modifier. So we're gonna select this object right here, go down into our modifiers and click on mirror. And so when we do that, this basically creates a mirrored copy of that object on the other side of whatever our origin is. Now, um, depending on how you have this set up, this might look a little bit funky, right? So if I do this on the Z axis, it's gonna create a copy that's flipped on the Z direction. So you just wanna pay attention to this and make sure that you're mirroring it along, along the X axis. And so if it isn't mirroring properly, we'll talk about a couple ways to fix that in just a second. But now what we've got, because this modifier is basically live, is we've got half of this object in here that we can start adjusting. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into wireframe mode right here, but let's say that we wanted to scale this down, right? We wanna make it smaller like this. We'll notice how any changes I make on one side are being reflected across that X axis to the other side. And what that means is that means that I don't have to make adjustments to both halves of this object in order to make it work. Now, you might be noticing that when we do this, um, we're running into a problem, which is the mesh can kind of like overlap, right? So I can make this change, but the mesh, um, if I move it across, is kind of like flipping across here, which isn't necessarily what we want. So what we can do to fix that is there's a tool in here called clipping. And so when you check the box for clipping, what that's gonna do is that's gonna stop your vertices from going through the mirror. So if I check the, check the box for clipping, then I tap G and Y and move this over, notice how this will take these objects and have them run into each other, but it's stopping them from passing over that plane right here. So what that means is that means that you can use this in order to set this so that it's intersecting right here. So that's an easy way to stop your object from running through another object in here. And so let's take a look at another example where this might be valuable. So let's say that we wanted to create maybe like a CAD fitting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a mesh right here and say I wanted to create a CAD fitting that had a um, hole on one side at a hole on the other side over here. Well, I don't necessarily wanna do that twice. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scale this like this. I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm gonna extrude it up just to give it some thickness. We're gonna call this good for right now. Now, one thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you've applied your rotation and scale in here. And the other thing that I'm going to do is let's go ahead and let's add in, I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm gonna add a loop cut right here. Let's add another loop cut right here. Then I'm gonna add a loop cut here and a loop cut here. And so what I'm doing is I'm generating detail in here that I can now use in order to extrude this up, 
right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude this up and this is gonna be a part of my fitting. All right, and then just real real quick for the sake of what we're doing here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a vertex snapping. So I'm gonna snap to the edge center. I'm gonna do a shift A and I'm gonna add a cylinder. And I'm gonna scale that cylinder down. I'm gonna rotate it on the Y axis, 90 degrees. This isn't really a Boolean tutorial, but we're basically going to use this as a Boolean, right? So we're gonna take this object, I'm gonna add a Boolean modifier and I'm gonna select this object right here. And then I'm gonna set the visibility of this other object to a wireframe. So we're gonna to go to the object properties, viewport display, show as, display as wire. There we go. So basically what we've done is we've just cut a hole in here is all that we're going to do. And um, I'm gonna go ahead, tab in here, I'm gonna bevel off these edges so that I've got this kind of fitting look right here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna create a second half of this, right? But at the moment, if I come in here and I add a mirror modifier, we're gonna have a problem. So if I try to mirror this, notice how I can mirror it this way, which is not what I want. I wanna mirror it on the Y axis, but that's not working very well because what it's trying to do is it's trying to mirror it across the object origin. Well, the object origin right now is in the middle of this object. Well, we can fix that by moving the origin location. And so in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a transform. Note this only shows up in object mode, but I'm just gonna use effect only origins. I'm gonna move the object origin over. And in this case, I want to snap it to this location right here. So what we've done is we've basically created a copy of this object. And now if I make any changes, those are gonna be reflected in here. Now, one other thing that I may wanna do is I may wanna tap into edit mode. I'm gonna take these vertices, I'm gonna move them over like this. And now what I wanna do is I wanna create another mirrored set of copies over here. So this is like four-sided, right? But again, that's not really doing what I want because of the location of the origin. So I can just move the origin over here so that it's still centered, right? We're still getting this copy over here, but it's centered on this side. Well, now if I tab or now if I activate the X axis mirroring right here, it's gonna flip it in the other direction. Well, then if I come in here and let's say I was to bevel this edge, right? So I'm gonna add a curve. Well, because we're mirroring this twice, right? We're mirroring it on one side and then the other side, that's now showing up on all four corners of our object. Notice how, because the Boolean modifier is higher up in the stack than this other mod than the mirror modifier is, that means that this is being repeated across all these objects. Notice how if I was to move that down, that wouldn't be the case anymore um, because these are in order based on top to bottom. And so let's say that I was to tab into edit mode and just take that whole thing and duplicate it. All right, so I'm just gonna create a copy down here. And you could probably do like an array modifier too if you wanted to, but notice how, because that's being mirrored across these different objects, it's actually reflecting across the different objects. So this is a fast way to um, set this up where all of your changes are live and adjustable across multiple different locations. And so another application for something like this might be table legs. So let's say that I was to toggle on vertex snapping. We're gonna snap with our closest. And we're gonna add a plane, remove this cross and I'm gonna move it back and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to make it smaller. So I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna go ahead and make this smaller. So I'm gonna scale this down and move it back over here. I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm gonna extrude it down like this. And so what I'm doing is I'm creating a table leg. I'm gonna go ahead and scale this right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna move it along the Y axis so that it's aligned right here, right? So we've got this table leg in here. Well, what we can do is we can use the mirror modifier in order to make this table leg mirror all the way around here. And so in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna set the 3D cursor in this central point right here. So I'm just gonna select this object, right click and go to a snap cursor to active. All right, and so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to object and I'm gonna do a set origin to 3D cursor. Now the object origin is in the very central point of this object. 
Well, now what that means is if I come in here and I add a mirror or modifier, it's going to flip it based on this location. So it's going to flip it along the X axis, which is central to this object. Then I can also click on this option to do it on the Y axis as well. And so the power of this is now if I come in here and I make a change, right? So let's say that I wanted to add a band in here like this. So I'm just going to add some loop cuts real quick. And then I'm going to select these faces. So I'm going to do an alt click and I'm going to use extrude along normals to extrude this in like this. Well, notice how that change is reflected across all of these objects instead of just the one. And so I basically cut my modeling time in a quarter because I don't have to go do this four times. All right, so one of the things that's super important for something like this is understanding the way the snapping works. I'm gonna do a video next week talking about some different applications and quick ways to snap to objects in Blender. But leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.